Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to begin to create our player blueprint. This is going to be featuring our player model. It's going to be featuring the colliders, the camera, everything we need in order to have our player set up and ready to go. So inside of our blueprints folder here, I'm going to right click and create a new blueprint class. This is going to be of type character, which basically gives us some preset things such as a capsule collider, a mesh, a forward direction, and also includes uh, a character movement component, which allows us to easily set up the player movement, the camera rotating, jumping, ground detection, and many other movement related things. So we'll create a character right here, and we are going to call this one player. We can then double click to open this up inside of the blueprint editor. I'm going to dock it to the main window here. And as you can see here, we have a few things set up already for us. We have a capsule component here, uh, which is our collider. We have an arrow component. This is this blue arrow right here, and this just defines the forward direction. We have a mesh, which is going to be our player mesh, which we can then animate later on and the character movement component, which as you can see here in the details panel, includes a lot of different options we can tweak in order to fine tune our movement. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna be doing is setting up our mesh. So I'm gonna select our mesh here, and I'm gonna se select the skeletal mesh, and I'm gonna change this to our player model right here. So there we go. We've got our player model now in here, but it doesn't really match the bound or the direction of this capsule. We need to rotate it and move it down a bit. So I'm going to set the Z location to be negative uh, 90. So it is down in the correct position. And now we just need to rotate it negative 90 on the Z as well. So it is facing in the correct forward direction. It's facing in its positive X direction like so. Okay. So we've got our play mesh there. Now what we need is the damage collider. And the damage collider is basically going to be uh, a collider that's going to check to see if there are any, any enemies inside of it when we are attacking. So as a child of mesh, we can just select mesh here, go add component, and I'm going to type box collision. And uh, let's call this one our damage collider like so. And in terms of positioning it, we can just lift it up here, move it forward a bit, and have it about there. So over here where we have the box extents, I'm gonna change this to be 25. And let's also position it to the left a bit since that's where uh, the weapon is. Make sure it's around in line like so. And there we go. Okay, so along with this, we also want to make sure that it is not a solid collider. It needs to be a trigger that objects can move through. So down the details panel, let's uh, make sure generate overlap events is enabled. And let's change the collision presets from overlap all dynamic to trigger. Okay, there we go. Uh, now what we can do is set up the camera. And the way we're going to do the camera is by attaching it to something known as a spring arm. And a spring arm is a very handy component which basically sets its child object or its child component at a fixed uh, direction and distance away from it. So what we can do then is just rotate the spring arm and the camera is going to rotate around our player. So I'm going to go add component. I'm going to look for a spring arm. Uh, make sure it is a child of the capsule component and not the mesh. So with this spring arm now, all we need to do is go to the details panel and change a few things. First of all, we want the point of orbit not to be around the waist of our player, but probably up, oops, probably up over near the player's head right here. So to drag that up to the head there, uh, we'll set the Y rotation to be 20. Oh, negative 20, I mean. So we do have a bit of a downwards facing camera when we start off. And apart from this, we can leave everything uh, as it is. So what we're gonna do now is, as a child of spring arm, we're gonna add component. We're gonna look for camera. There we go. So now we got our camera in here. It is going to be right at the end of the spring arm, as you can see here. Now, for our camera, what we want to do is move it over just a little bit to the right because since this is going to be a third person controller uh, we probably don't want the camera directly behind the player as that might uh, sort of obstruct the view a bit so normally what other games do is they move the camera over to one of the sides a bit so i'm going to move this camera uh, to be 60 on the y location so it's a bit to the right of the player and that is pretty much it so if you select the spring arm here 
and we press E to get the rotation gizmo, you'll see that if I rotate it, the camera follows along as well. Okay, so now what we can do is click save, click compile, we can go back to our main level here, and we can set it up so that when we press play, our player spawns in, because right now, if we press play, uh, the player's not there, we just have control of the default camera anchor, which just allows us to fly around, similar to the main viewport. So what we need to do is create a game mode so that it knows the default things, such as the default player to spawn at the start of the level. So let's right click here in the blueprint class. We're going to create a new blueprint. This one is going to be a game mode base. And a game mode base basically defines some of the defaults, again, such as the player, the default UI, the default uh, multiplayer aspects. Okay, so we'll go game mode base. I'm going to call this one my game mode. We can double click to open this up. This is also a blueprint, so uh, we don't actually have to add anything here. If you do want some sort of global uh, logic for your level, then you can probably add to the event graph here, but we're just going to leave it as it is. And over in the details panel, we want to make sure that we have the default pawn class here. We want to change that to our player right here. Okay, that's all we need to do. So we can click compile, we can click save, we can close out of the game mode here. I'm going to also close out of project settings and in our main level here, let's go over to the world settings tab, which is inside of the details panel here and world settings basically are global settings for the current level. So we can change things such as our game mode override right now. It's on none, which means there is no game mode active. So let's select that and choose my game mode. So now when we press play, the game's going to look at the game mode and go, okay, what is the default player class to spawn? It's going to see it is our player blueprint, so it is going to spawn the player blueprint in on this player start position right here. Okay, so we can press play, and there we go. This is our player blueprint set up. It's spawning in. Now all we need to do is implement the functionality to actually look around with the mouse, rotate the camera, and move around with the keyboard. Okay, so we are going to be beginning on setting up the camera orbiting in the next lesson. So I'll see you all then. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are gonna be setting up the camera orbiting system for our player blueprint here. In the previous lesson, we set up the player blueprint so it has all the components set up ready to go. We also have this spring arm component, which if we go to the rotation tool, we can rotate it around, which has the camera then orbiting around the player, okay? So in this lesson, we're gonna make it so that whenever we move our mouse, the camera rotates around our player. So let's go to the event graph here. And what I'm going to do is start off by deleting these three nodes that are here by default so that we have a blank canvas here. And to begin, we're going to set up the horizontal movement. So when we move the mouse left to right, the camera is going to rotate left to right around the player. And to do this, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go mouse X. And you'll see that we can get mouse events. We want to get the mouse X input event. And what this means is pretty much whenever the mouse moves, this gets triggered and it sends over an axis value of the current mouse, of the current horizontal mouse uh, movement, okay? So this value ranges from negative one to one, negative one meaning the mouse is moving left, one meaning the mouse is moving right, and zero meaning the mouse isn't moving at all. But with this, we aren't actually going to be rotating the spring arm or the camera. Instead, we're going to be moving the entire player left or right. We're going to be rotating them around because when we move around, we want the player to always be facing in the forward direction that the camera is. So we're going to drag off from here and we are going to go to the add controller, uh, your input node right here. And what this does is this adds a certain value to our controllers, your input, which is the vertical rotation. So if we plug axis value into the value input, that is all we need to do. And this is a node here that is set up for us by this character movement component. Uh, this involves all of the movement uh, variables and properties that we can modify. So if we save this, compile, press play, you should see that when we move the mouse left and right, uh, the character rotates to face the forward direction. So no matter where we look, the player is always rotating with us as we move the mouse, okay? So we got the left and right movement, but what about the up and down? Well, that's a bit different because with this, we are going to be rotating the spring arm. We don't want to rotate the entire player because that will look a bit weird. So we're going to be rotating the camera up and down. Okay. So what we're going to do for that is just like getting mouse X, we now need to get mouse Y. So 
mouse events mouse y here and this triggers whenever we move the mouse up and down axis value again ranging from uh, one being moving the mouse up and negative one being moving the mouse down and we want to plug this into an add local rotation add local rotation on the spring arm component here okay there we go it creates that so what we're doing here is we are going to add a rotation to the spring arm and that rotation is going to be along the y-axis and the y-axis if we go to the viewport here select the spring arm the y-axis is this green one here so we can move this up and down so the camera goes like so okay so in event graph to do that what we're going to do is right click and create a new node called make rotator this basically creates a rotation for us which we can then plug into this add local rotation node like so and the axis value we are going to be plugging into the y axis here on the make rotator node so basically we're sending over a delta rotation which is going to be added on to the existing spring arm rotation so if we press play you'll see that we can move left and right but we can also move up and down like so uh, but something you may notice is that if we keep moving down our camera just keeps going around and we can actually go 360 degrees which isn't probably what you want and something else you may also notice is that when the camera goes down and it hits the ground it sort of moves towards the player this is really cool as the spring arm already has included with it um, basically detecting if there's anything between uh, the start of the spring arm and the camera so if there's anything between it uh, it pretty much snaps the camera so it is always looking at the player nothing can ever get in the way uh, between the camera and the player which is really good okay but we still need to fix the issue of actually being able to rotate all the way around like this as it may be very disorientating uh, to use as the player so what we need to do for this is clamp the rotation and clamping the rotation basically means uh, we get the Y axis here the Y rotation and we want to make sure that it never goes below a certain number and never goes above a certain number so to do this I'm gonna plug this add local rotation node into a set relative rotation for the spring arm so after we add the rotation to this spring arm, we then want to set it um, so that it is in, make sure it's in between two certain values. So over here, what we're then gonna do is create the get target rotation node on the spring arm. And this here basically just returns to us the rotation of the spring arm currently. So we wanna get that. And then we want to plug this rotation here into a break rotator uh, node. And what this does is pretty much the exact opposite of make rotator instead of creating a rotation it gets a rotation and breaks it up into each of the individual axes which we can use now since our vertical rotations are only dependent on the y-axis we're going to get this and we are going to plug this into a clamp angle node here okay and this clamp angle node has a few things first of all it has the actual angle that we are inputting into it which is our y-axis and then we have a min angle degrees and a max angle angle degrees and these are basically the min and max values that this angle can possibly be. So the minimum rotation, we're going to have it at about 45 degrees. And the max rotation, we are going to have it at 20. Okay, uh, you may want to tweak these numbers a bit as we uh, continue on, as you may want it a bit higher, you may want it a bit lower. Okay, so we got this value here. Now we need to make it into a rotator again so we can plug it into this set relative rotation node. So we're going to plug this into make rotator. Uh, we actually want to delete this connection and make sure it's connected to the Y axis here. And then we can just plug that into the new rotation input on the set relative rotation node. And there we go. So this is pretty much it in order to set it up so that it clamps uh, the rotation so we can't go too high or too low. Let's now press play and see if it works. So here we go. We can rotate left and right. And if I move down, you'll see that it stops when I reach here. I can no longer move the camera down anymore. I can move it up and it stops here uh, so I can't move it up anymore either so there we go we've got our camera rotation set up we can rotate left or right we can rotate up and down and that is all good so in the next lesson we are going to be looking at actually setting up our player movement so that we can actually start moving around uh, jumping and then later on setting up the ability to actually attack okay uh, now, before we go real quick, I'm going to probably put these in some comments so that they're a bit neater. So I'm going to get these here, select these two nodes, right click, 
go create comment from selection and I'm going to call this one our camera uh, rotate camera rotate horizontal okay we can then readjust these like so shrink this down a bit uh, it's really good practice to actually uh, comment your nodes as later on once you have many many new nodes in your project it may be quite hard to understand what each of them do uh, especially if they're all uh, messy like this right here so I'm just going to tidy them up a bit we can then select them again and I'm going to right click create comment from selection and this one is going to be called our camera rotate vertical all right we can always select these again readjust them to a position where we want them and there we go okay so yeah overall uh make sure you do comment your nodes we'll be doing this again in the future for our movement for our jumping just so you can see what each of the different segments here are uh, at a quick glance okay so thank you for watching and i'll see you all in the next lesson